this third screencast relating to electric fields and matter um, will at least get us somewhere where we can calculate some problems now. So we'll discuss bound charge and polarization. We talked about polarization before. I was calling it dipole density. That's big P here. And what we see here, this is the potential, this equation is the potential at some point outside a charge distribution um, adding up all the little dipoles in that distribution. So we're imagining that this charge distribution is neutral, but we can think of it being made up of a bunch of little arrows whose uh, uh, the dipole density is, is big P of R, also known as the polarization. If I integrate that over the entire charge volume, I'll get the potential at a point R away from the origin uh, due to all the dipoles. All right, so once again, we have some field or we have some charge distribution whose net charge is zero, but whose net dipole moment is not. And so therefore we get an electric field if we look far away. And uh, we're going to calculate the electric field by doing the potential because we know the potential is typically easier to calculate than the, the field proper. Definition again, I'm putting a little tail because uh, I don't think you can tell probably on, on the screencast what's a capital P and what's a little p. So this little tail here, Griffiths doesn't do it. This, this is supposed to represent capital P, which is dipole density, a.k.a. polarization. All right, the total dipole moment of a distribution is just adding this dipole density up over the entire volume of the charge distribution. And in Griffiths on pages uh, 173, 174, after doing a, a few mathematical tricks on this relation here, we can rewrite the, the uh, uh, potential with this relation here. This uses the divergence theorem, integration by parts, and the, uh, the property of, uh, of r hat and r script. Um, this prime here, that just means that you are um, you're taking the divergence uh, at the prime coordinate. So if you're in spherical systems, say you're gonna that's gonna be r prime and theta prime and phi prime and not r theta and phi. That's what this prime means over here. So why is this uh, why is this format so interesting here? If you look at it, this this uh, um, the potential up above went like one over r squared. We so that's something interesting about dipoles is their potential. Uh, it falls off way faster than if we're thinking about individual charges. It goes like 1 over r squared. If you look, this is rewritten down here. It looks like 1 over r again. And look, this is, a, this is an area surface integral, and this is a volume integral. So these integrals here, what this is supposed to remind us of, this looks like this could be, um, this part here could be related to some uh, surface charge density. Somehow this is related to some surface charge density. And over here, this term over here is related to some volume charge density. And now here's the thing. What we're going to find out, this is what we're interested in is a, a charge distribution of a dielectric. And these charges are basically, they're on a short leash uh, uh, to their uh, uh, nuclei. All right, so the, the electrons in this, in this distribution, or the ions, they can't move very, very far. So this is going to be bound charge, surface charge, and this is going to be uh, bound charge density. And let's look at what that means uh, uh, on the other screen. I'll, I'll refresh the screen here, and we'll draw it out, and we'll find out how does this represent surface, bound surface charge and bound uh, charge density. And then we'll do a sample problem. So if we define the bound surface charge as the polarization in the direction of the of, of the of the surface area of the of the surface we're interested in integrating over, that's the surface of the, the charge distribution. So this is the surface of the charge distribution, that's the volume of the charge distribution, and the net charge is zero, but it's made up of all these arrows. So if I define the bound charge as basically equivalent to the component that is normal to the to the surface of the polarization so that's the that's the surface charge density and then the volume charge density as the divergence of the polarization then i can rewrite the uh the potential as 1 over 4 pi e naught and this will just be sigma b over r script da all right and that looks very much just like the potential of a of a surface charge distribution plus now the contribution from the 
volume, the bound volume charge density, which will just be rho b over script r d tau. Let's look at a picture to see if we can make some uh, conceptual sense of this. Let's say I have a glass sphere. It's a dielectric. It's electrically neutral, and I suddenly immerse it in an electric field. All right, and let's say it's a constant electric field, and what this is going to do is this is going to displace the charges inside this neutral dielectric. It's not going to rip them off the, the molecules, but I'm going to have net positive at one end and net negative at the other now due to this electric field. So my plus charges, or my lack of electrons rather, are going to accumulate on the northern hemisphere negative charges are going to accumulate on the southern hemisphere. All right, I can I can draw this another way. I can say, well, now the the sphere is polarized. And so, I'm going to draw the polarization instead. Remember the polarization, the dipole moments, they're going to go from negative to positive. So, let's draw that in. All right. So, instead, what I could do is instead of drawing the external electric field, and then I'll have how the charges distribute, I can instead just replace, replace that with this. I'm going to draw lines instead of many vectors. And these lines that I'm drawing represent the polarization capital P. All right, so this here, these lines are capital P. Now one classic problem is a uniformly charged sphere. That's the way I've drawn it here. Um, I'm drawing field lines now instead of vector arrows. I could have uh, drawn vector arrows instead, but because my field lines here are very uniform, the density of field line is uniform, the, the P is the same strength uh, in this sphere and it's in the same direction. All right, and now what we want to ask ourselves then, given a polarized sphere, um, and sometimes in, in book problems especially, you don't know how that polarization got there. Let's just assume I have a uniform polarization. Um, and what is the electric field at point P due to this uniform polarization? Now, it all came from, from charges. Let's actually go back once more to the charge picture. And let's see what's going to happen. In fact, uh, let's see here. Let's get rid of that. Remember we had those charges. We had a whole bunch of plus charges here. Well, these aren't free charges, but they did shift. So this shows the charges on the surface here. This is the, uh, that's the sigma bound. That's the, the bound surface charge there. What about the charges inside this thing? Remember, it's, a, it's an electrically neutral sphere. Here's what's going on on the inside. So really what I have is a chain of plus minus, plus minus, plus minus, plus minus. Oh, can I get one more minus in? All right, so in this case right here, that's supposed to be a plus right there in the, in the middle here. Let me erase that. In, in the case that I've drawn right here, uh, sigma b is zero. If I take any chunk, if I take any chunk here, and I want to know the bound charge density, there's just as many plus and minus charges lined up in this example here. Now that's not true. If the field isn't uniform, uh, if, the, uh, if the field isn't uniform, the polarization isn't uniform inside uh, the dielectric, then that's not going to be true. All right, but I do have now, you can see, I have net sigma b. So I can think of all the bound charge in this particular example here as going to zero because they all line up equal and opposite and any any little place that I that I any little surface I draw and I and I add up all the bound charge inside for this example it's going to be it's going to be zero but there has been net charge pushed to the surface but it's stuck there so it's bound surface charge so basically the question is what's the what's the field at point p um, this is why this is nice is I can recast the problem as I don't really have to worry about the, the dipoles anymore. I just worried about bound charge. If we know the bound charge on the outside, it should be fairly easy to calculate the, um, the electric field at point P.